I recently posted a video on uh, special relativity and some of the strange effects that come into play uh, corresponding with the Doppler shift of light, the velocity addition formula in special relativity, as well as uh, a length contraction, these weird effects that happen in special relativity. And I left it without very much of the math, just kind of quoting the results. So as promised, I, I want to go into some of the math associated with this. So if you, if you don't want to hear all the math details, watch the other videos that talks about just the effects that we see and the final results. But if you, if you do want to see all of the math, then, uh, then here it is. And I'm going to try to uh, show most of the details. I might skip a few algebra steps, but I won't skip anything that's not just uh, uh, solving for variables and, and basic algebra like that. So let's get started. First, uh, we want to look at the Doppler shift effect. So let's, as always, we, we start with drawing a, a space-time diagram, and this is going to be C times the time of A, and this is going to be XA. And let's say we have another observer observer B that is moving with respect to A. And I'm just going to draw its time axis for now. We know its spatial axis is tilted, but let's not worry about that for now. And let's say I fire a beam of light from A to B. So light goes on these, uh, on these 45 degree axes. And I'm just going to say right off the bat that if this is the time t, then we're going to say that this, uh, the time according to b that the light arrives at b, is going to have to be k times t. We don't know what this k value is yet. We're, we're going to solve for that. Uh, and in order to solve for this, let's say b fires the light directly back. Okay, so. A at some time for A capital T, they fire a beam of light, it arrives at B at what we're calling KT, and they bounce the light right back. Well, this distance is actually going to be K squared times T. And the reason for that is if I were to draw the space time diagram of B, so this is XB and this is uh, CTB. And if A's time axis is like this, CTA, and I fired the beam of light from B to A, and let's say this is TB, time that T fires it, then this picture is just the backwards version of this picture. So we know that uh, by the rules of special relativity, there can't be any uh, special observers, so the rules have to apply exactly the same way. So this would be KTB, and what we're saying is this first time is KT, so this equals KT. So this time that uh, it's received back at A is going to be K squared times T. So that's just proving that. There are a couple of other points that are going to be that are going to be helpful to know. If I say, according to A, what is the simultaneous event that the beam of light arrived at B, then this distance, see if I can draw this without being too complicated, this distance we're going to call T1, and we're going to call this distance T2. And we'll see what all of these different times all according to A, have to do with, uh, with helping us calculate K. So T1 is the time that it took B to move out to this position. So let's say uh, out here, this is at position D. So in this amount of time, B is traveling at some velocity V, and it makes it out to this distance. So let's find out what this T1 is in terms of you know this uh, K and these capital T's. So let me get my yellow back. So T1 is just going to be equal to 
since this t1 value is right in between the t time and the k squared t time, it's just the time right in between that, so you can think of it as the average of those two times. So that's easy enough to write down. We've got k squared times t this time uh, plus this time divided by 2. So plus t divided by 2. So it's just the average of, it's right in the middle of these two points. So you can think of it as their average, the sum of them divided by 2. So now if we say I'm going to multiply this time by the speed that b is going at, so times v, that is going to equal the distance that it moved. I see that v is going at this velocity. It's been moving that way for that amount of time, so it should match up with this distance. Okay, so we have one equation. Now let's look at this t2 variable. This t2, it's the amount of time it took the light to make it that far. So t2, we can notice that t2 is going to be equal to this time, t1, minus capital T. So t2 equals uh, t1 plus, sorry, uh, let me undo that, t1 minus capital T. It's the difference between this time and this time. So t1 minus t, that is going to equal, you can, you can substitute this value for t1 in, it's going to actually be k squared t minus t over 2, and that is t2. And I wish I could move that down, but I don't know if I can do that without messing things up, so I'm going to leave it like that for now. So that is how long it took the light to make it from the origin to a position d. So if I multiply this t2 by c, sorry that that got a little bit small, but if I multiply that by c, then that also has to equal my distance d. Okay, so we have two equations here, uh, this equation and this equation, that both equal d. So, so let's write that out. We have k2t plus t over 2 times v, this value must equal k squared t minus t over 2 times c. So these two are the same. Those values have to match up. So let's uh, see if we can take this equation and solve for k. Well, we're going to notice that we can just multiply both sides by 2. So those cancel out. We can divide both sides by t because they all have, each term has this common factor t. So that just goes to 1, this just goes to 1, that's 1, and that is 1 as well. So if you take this equation, and I'm just going to, actually I'll, I'll put in this, these steps. So we're getting k squared plus 1, all that times v, equals k squared minus 1 times c. And if you rearrange this equation, uh, I'll, let you, I'll let you do that on your own, you get k squared equals the square root of 1 plus v over c over 1 minus v over c. And let me scroll down a bit so you can see that. So this k value is going to depend on the velocity, but it is just going to be this time, how I compare this time to the time that b measures over here. Now, how is that going to help us find out what the Doppler shift is? Well, let's, uh, let's draw a fresh picture. We have our uh, spatial axis of A and our time axis of A, and we have observer B that is moving. So this is C, T, B. And let's say that I emit light at a certain frequency. So I fire a beam of light, and one of its waves travels this direction. And then every so often, 
there's a new wave that I fire. So if, if my light as a function of my time kind of goes like this, then this time delta t corresponds to how long is it between wave crests? When are wa how often are wave crests emitted? So that is delta t as measured by A. And over here, we're going to get what B observes is how often wave fronts are seen by B. And this equation, this uh, setup that we have up here, you might be able to see that we're going to be able to relate this by delta T B is just equal to K times delta T A. Now, the frequency of light that is emitted or that we see is dependent on how often we see these wave fronts of the light. And the equation that relates them is frequency, uh, as measured by A, is going to equal 1 over the amount of time between wave crests that it sees. Likewise, the frequency of B that B sees is going to be 1 over delta T, the time that wave fronts arrive at B. So taking these, two, taking these two equations, we see that the frequency of B that B observes is going to equal 1 over, I'm going to turn this delta T B into a K delta T A, and that equals 1 over k times the frequency of a, because 1 over delta ta is just the frequency that a emits it at. So putting in this value for k, I made a mistake up here. Uh, I'll make sure to comment on this. This square root, uh, w when it's still squared, you won't have the square root, uh, but it's just k is equal to this square root of 1 plus v over c, one mi over 1 minus v over c. Uh, I'll make sure to comment that on the on the video. So, sorry, I got a little mixed up, but this equation, if I just do the inverse of k, this is going to be 1 minus v over c over 1 plus v over c times the frequency of a. And this is the Doppler shift formula that I, I mentioned in the, in the uh, qualitative video. Um, one thing that I should mention is that all of these formulas are assuming that uh, the person at B, the observer at B, is moving directly away from A. If they're kind of moving on a, on a sideways path, it might be a little different. Um, so I'm going, to, I'm going to pause this here and then pick up with the velocity addition, for, the velocity addition formula.